Welcome again to our message. Isaiah, of course, is one of the favourite books of all times, quoted extensively by our Lord Jesus Christ and read by Christians throughout all the ages. Why? Because Isaiah is very applicable. He's, a, if I could say this, he's a contemporary prophet. Because the things that he speaks of really apply to us today. And we're looking at chapter 57 now, and it starts off with these words, The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. Merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous are taken away from the evil to come. Now, this is a very interesting truth that I want to exegete for a few moments now, and to try and explain it. You know, why are the righteous taken away? Often, when they're quite young. Well, when they're quite young. Well, I want to give you two or three illustrations. I was in France many decades ago, and I was visiting and speaking at a church in the north of France. Well, when I arrived, the parents were in mourning. They had just lost their four-year-old daughter. And they said she was like a little angel. I mean, if you could have a perfect child, they said, she was there. And they had other children, and they said, she's quite different, she's quite different. She was so beautiful. She was so pleasant. And everything they asked her to do, she did with such joy. And then, suddenly she contracted a disease, and the doctors could do nothing for her, and the result was she died. And so I arrived a few weeks after that death, and they said, why? And I asked the Lord, well, why? And he drew me to this scripture, Isaiah 57, verse 1. The righteous perisheth, and no man, you know, considereth it. The righteous are taken away from the evil to come. And I said, God spoke to me so clearly that in his mercy he had taken her because he could see the dangers that she was going to experience and he was preserving her from all that. Well, another illustration of a girl, this time one who was about 22 years of age, and she was a Bible student of ours in Switzerland. She was French. And, oh, what a delight she was. She had a call to uh, the continent of Africa. And she was preparing herself. She got up so early in the morning to pray and read the Bible, prepare for the studies of that day. And then uh, suddenly she contracted uh, leukemia. Well... The local doctor could do nothing and he put her in the hospital. The hospital said, we can do nothing. And so the doctor, who was also a Christian, he said, would you like to bring her back into the Bible school? And we had a beautiful Bible school. It was a hotel, in fact, the hotel of the town. It was really wonderful. And, uh, you know, she could be surrounded by her friends, prayers, and if God was so pleased to heal, fine. If not, she would go in the presence of the Lord. Well, we conferred with the parents who had come over from France. And they were agreeable. She was agreeable. And so we prepared a lovely room for her. And there she was, you know, sinking. But we had a convention at that time with some 200 people there. And we were all praying. And... Uh, it was as though when she went way down, we would pray and, you know, her health would return, the blood would come back into her cheeks, and she would eat heartily, and then again she would go down. We would pray and back she would come. About seven ministers there at that convention, and uh, we conferred one with another. You know, what was happening? Every time we prayed, God would bring her back, but not permanently. She would go down again. And so... Um, the senior minister amongst us said, you know, I think we should pray differently. We should pray next time. Lord, if you want to take her, take her. If not, heal her. See? And uh, so we all agreed. Madeline, that was her name, she agreed. Her parents agreed. And so we were called 
in the afternoon and again she'd gone right down and we joined hands around her bed Madeline, her parents, seven ministers and the senior minister prayed on behalf of us all and he said Lord you can heal her we've seen this you're bringing her back but she's going down again Lord if you want to heal her heal her if not take her if that's your pleasure and at that moment the power of God was so great I don't think I've ever experienced it in my life like that and I saw my eyes my spiritual eyes were open and I saw the chariots of Israel come right across the bed and you know those chariots you know, as uh, Elisha cried out as he was being separated from Elijah who was going up into heaven he saw the chariots of Israel they separate the living from the departed and uh, then I saw the Lord himself come down from heaven and as he touched Madeline's body he came out in beautiful white and there the two of them went up into heaven and she as it were, leaning upon his arm and talking together, went right up into heaven. The following day, I had a vision of her in heaven with other girls about the same age, dancing. I think they had tambourines in their hands. They were dancing in the field, praising the Lord and so happy. But I said, Lord, why? You had given her a call to Africa and she was seeking your face. Why didn't you hear her? He said, later on, you will understand. Well, <clears throat> some eight years later, I did understand. Because at that convention where she died, a friend of mine <clears throat> went up to another girl, a French girl, and said, you've taken Madeline's call. And she said, yes. And uh, he said, well, you're going to, uh, to Africa, and you're going to train and go to Africa. She said, yes. Well, that girl was of a completely disp uh, different disposition to the pleasant, uh, lovely Madeline. And uh, he did take that call, but when she went to Africa, she married and Oh, what a sad time she had. And after eight years of misery, she died. The Lord said to me after eight years, when that girl had died, he said, Now you see how I spared I spared Madeline I took her I took her you see that that would have happened to her too she would have made a, an unfortunate marriage and she would have had such sadness and he said because of my mercy because of my love for Madeline I spared her well one other case uh, all concerning the ladies I think they need comforting the most don't they, at times like this well there was a pastor's wife and she had a sister and uh, that sister had a very miserable marriage too and the result was that she became sick and, well her sister the pastor's wife and the church you know were praying much for her and then she went right down and she died and you know the Lord said to her sister the pastor's wife he said this he said she's with me now and he gave her a vision of her sister in heaven beside the still waters oh with others rejoicing in the Lord such perfect peace such lovely joy and he said you know she's better off with me than she is below where she was suffering so much and so those few little illustrations I trust will help us understand those verses those beginning verses you know um, in uh, Isaiah 57 you know, the righteous are taken that they will not see the evil to come and then he shall enter into rest he shall they shall rest in their bed and uh, then awaken to righteousness well, <coughs> Isaiah 57 follows with a rebuke <coughs> to those who are not following the Lord or have wandered away from the Lord. And uh, in his kindness, <coughs> he says, you know, 
to those who, like the prodigal son, realize how wrong they have been and turn back. The Lord says this, You know, I have seen his ways, will heal him, I will lead him also, restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. And so, there you have the thought again of some who have wandered away and they've gone into all kinds of difficulties and God speaking to them, God causing them to have all kinds of troubles to bring them back like a prodigal son who wasted all his fortune and you know, was just eating the husk of the field came to his senses and when he did and as these have done here the Lord said well I've seen his ways and I will heal him how wonderful it is you know this message of restoration for those who once knew the truth and have turned God said well I'll have compassion but those who do not turn and those who can really be categorized as wicked look what the Lord says in those closing verses in chapter 57 but the wicked are like the troubled sea it cannot rest whose waters you know cast in mire and dirt and he said there's no peace saith my God to the wicked well there are two categories there the righteous if I could say this who are spared from the evil to come then of course there are those who know the way and turned aside from the ways of righteousness and they've got into all kinds of difficulties and you know they turn back to God and God said I will heal them I will leave them I will bring them back but the others you know these categories of the wicked he said there's no peace for the wicked he churned like the troubled sea well may God grant that we be in that category of the righteous and however long God gives us to live you know that we live in peace and joy with him well I want to continue now with a very wonderful chapter as chapter 58 and 58 is an extraordinary chapter again it's a chapter if I could say this filled with wonderful promises to those of us who choose the right and uh, who come away from the fields of sin if I could say this but it's basically written to if I could say this to the believer ones who have known the way of God and are continuing in church but their actual lives are far from God you know there's a danger of approaching God with our mouth and not with our heart and so it was with these and so they say to God well why don't you hear us when we cry when we pray uh, when we fast they said we do all these things but you don't hear us he said well look he said you come as people who want to know my ways but your life is so different and so he starts to give them if I could say this admonitions he said look what is the fast that I have chosen well he said it's to loose the bands of wickedness in other words stop walking in your wicked ways and then he said uh, you put heavy burdens on those whom you have authority over you don't treat them right and then uh, he said you oppress them and he said I want you to break every yoke and the yoke is a bondage you know we can put bondages on others for whom we have responsibility you know we can be very hard with them and God was admonish admonishing if I could say this those who had responsibility and authority over others they weren't treating them right and so God said stop that but then there's the other thought of a yoke a yoke of sin you know a bondage that we could have you know ourselves bondage to lust bondage to anger bondage to evil and he said look you're to break those yokes and he said if you would do this he said now this is what I will do and he goes on to say this you know 
you'll be like a garden a watered garden and uh, in verse 11 he said that he would guide those that turn back to him continually and he would satisfy their soul in drought and make fat their bones and they'd be like this watered garden springs of water would never fail in other words to be like the garden of Eden filled with all the fruit of the spirit but coming back there are some conditions in verse 7 here are the conditions to come back to God and uh, it is a way of righteousness practical righteousness if I could say that it says that we are to deal our bread to the hungry that we are to bring the poor into our house and when we see the naked we are to cover them and we are not to hide ourselves from our own flesh or our own families if our own families are in need you know uh, if we ignore uh, if I could say this the needs of our family members when they're in difficulty well the apostle Paul writing to Timothy says well we are worse than a heathen so practical righteousness is essential to cut the wickedness break the bands of wickedness and then practice practical righteousness then look he says in verse 8 you know thy light shall break forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily you know if we will do these things God is a rewarder this is one of the things that uh, the Apostle Paul brings out in Hebrews chapter 11 you know without faith it's impossible to please God but he that cometh to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek and so God is saying this look if you will stop all your wickedness and if you will practice what I would say you know practical righteousness feeding the poor looking after those who are in need giving clothing to those who are without then God says look I will reward you I will reward you before they were seeking God they were crying out to God they were fasting they were doing all these things but God was not listening to them because their lives were an abomination to him in other words um, as one person put it you know on Saturday night they were one thing and on Sunday they appeared to be godly well God says look if you live the life during the week then on Sunday when you come to church I'll hear you so that is essentially what he's saying here and then you see the point is this that we must understand when we do right and we seek the Lord he will reward us so what are the rewards yet thy light shall break forth as the morning it shall break forth as the morning in other words how wonderful to see where we're going to know of assurance we're on the pathway of God and then thine health shall spring forth speedily you know God will give us physical health you know God will make us healthy you know Moses speaks of the fact that in Psalm 90 that he'll give us 70 years of life and you know by reason of strength he'll make it 80 or more you know God gives us good health when we live the life and uh, then he goes on and thy righteousness shall go before thee thy righteousness shall go before thee in other words the righteousness if we live the life then the righteousness of God shall go before us and make a way where there is no way it's so wonderful you know live the life and God will mightily bless us and then thou shalt call you see in verse 9 then thou shalt call you'll call unto God and he shall answer 
and thou shalt say here am I and he shall take if you would take away the, uh, from the midst of thee the yoke the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity you know God says look I'll answer you he said you know through his um, I would say half brother James the apostle in his epistle he said you have not because you ask not and God said look you will do these things you ask I will give oh what a wonderful privilege that is to come to God to ask him and he will respond but he says look I don't want any more of this criticism you know putting forth the finger criticizing other people you know the Lord Jesus was particularly angry about that and he said look you are those who look into somebody else's eye and say may I just take away that little splinter and he said you've got a beam in your own eye in other words criticizing somebody else for some minor thing when you've got terrible sin in your own life and God hates that you see and uh, speaking vanity instead of speaking those things that are truthful and uh, then he goes on you see and uh, again verse 10 very practical you draw out your soul to the hungry satisfy the afflicted soul see then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness shall be as a noonday in other words as we do unto others God will do unto us if we look after the needs of others we care for others practical righteousness we do that then God says alright you've done that I'll do this reminds me of a pastor you know once who his wife said uh, can I have a new dress you see and, well didn't particularly want to spend money on his wife's dress so he said no and he was praying the next day and the Lord said uh, as you treat your wife so I will treat you well that wife quickly got her new dress you see because the, the pastor wanted to be well treated by the Lord but there it is the golden rule do unto others as you would have people do to you but it's more than that do unto others as you would have God do unto you and so it's a very practical chapter this and then look at these tremendous promises you see in verse 12 he says this you know you do all these things and uh, your children shall build up the old waste places you know as we live then we give an inheritance to our children an inheritance to our children and those children become like us they build up the old ways places and thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations in other words your life will have an impact upon generations that is a tremendous promise that God gives to the righteous and you will be called the repair of the breach in other, though, other words those who restore the paths you know make the paths good again build up you know truth and righteousness and then he goes on and if you would turn away your foot from the Sabbath you know the Sabbath you know God's day let's keep it holy there are so many promises involved in those who respect God's day where should we be in God's day in the house of God and then this is he continues with these things you see he said again if you honor God's servants you know God will honor you and again you know if you not do your own pleasure but do the pleasure of God and then it also not speaking your own words in other words we have to understand that in the scriptures it's very clear if you want long life then refrain your lips from speaking evil you know as we are careful in speaking the truth and not criticizing it affects the length of our days so there we are and then here is the promise 
then thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord. In other words, your joy will be in the Lord. You will delight in his presence. And he is the Lord, and he said, I change not. Everything can change around us, disasters, storms, earthquakes, and so forth. But those who are the Lord's, they're like columns that do not move. And he said, Thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. The high places of the earth. And uh, there you are. You know, we walk over, if I could say this, the storms of life. Instead of them dominating us and causing us all kinds of problems, now if you belong to the Lord he looks after you even in the time of great distress so we come to the end of this these two chapters and there you are there are the truths for the righteous there is eternal blessing not only in heaven above but on earth below God cares for us as we care for others may that golden rule be engraved in our hearts as you would others do to you do to them but more than that what we do to others will affect how God deals with us may God bless you and may you be like that well watered garden full of the joy and fruit of the Lord Amen